through the snow of the mountains here as Colorado Springs switchbacks against Indy 11 from Widener Field in Colorado Springs, Colorado, brought to you by Capelli Sport. Snow continues to come down here. It's going to be one of those days here up in the mountains along with the longtime pro Chris Nurse. I'm Joe Malva. Happy to have you along for this one brought to you by Capelli Sport. And it's been a rough go of it to begin the season here for Colorado Springs. They are still winless, and it's all losses. They don't even have a point in a draw to show for it, Chris. Something has to change. Yeah, and I think it was so uh, complimentary that when we spoke to the head coach this week, he was standing by his players. Often in these situations where a team has lost five, not won one game in their opening five games, sometimes the coaching staff then turn to put it back onto the players and blame players for not performing, especially when they reach the quarterfinals last season but he's very much saying that the team is together the group is together the staff and the players are in it together and he's not too disheartened by the performances and results so far he thinks it's only a matter of time before things turn around and one of those players in the fold a new one just coming on loan this week from philadelphia union he's our keg one Modelo player to watch it's matt real yeah interesting signing apparently it was in the works for a while so it wasn't a knee jerk given their poor start to the season it's a player they've been after a while obviously he's defensive brings a little bit of experience to the team it's not a team that's struggled essentially to score goals as they have been conceding goals so essentially he's not coming to maybe change things because they've only scored one goal this season they need goal scorers but it was a signing that was already in the in the works long before their results became poor indy's last five is better than colorado springs but it's also been a struggle for a team that's got to win four losses and a draw to begin the year yeah i think the the key when you look at indy 11 is they've scored 10 goals but in their past three games they've conceded 10 goals also so in a total of, of 15 goals conceded this season 10 have come in the past three games so they're definitely on a, a low run of form right now. Themselves getting themselves back to form has to be the ability to keep clean sheets. It's Jack Blake who's been getting it done offensively at a team that has Augie Williams, Sebastian Guenzotti, Douglas Martinez, you name it. Jack Blake leads the way with four goals. And this is this is vital. This is probably what's giving Indy 11 a little bit of leg right now is that Jack Blake is the player putting the ball in the back of the net for them. They've been very lackluster defensively conceding goals, but he's been the player who's been able to keep them in games, give them a chance by putting the ball into the back of the net. Four goals in six games. Jack Blake has been their go-to player so far this season. Well, you're going to have the snow impacting this game without a doubt. The weather certainly a factor here in Colorado Springs. You know what else is a factor? The hunger of these two teams. Neither have started the year the way they want to. Somebody has to come away with something that gets them back on track. It's Colorado Springs against Indy coming up in just a moment. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. Injured in a crash? Get McDivitt and you get a firm dedicated to every single detail of your case. We have the knowledge and resources to investigate the crash and your insurance company's small print. Details matter. That's why we dive deep into every aspect of your case. This gives us the firepower we need to make the insurance company pay you the money you deserve. We never ask you to pay a penny until we get you max money for your injuries. Online at McDivittLaw.com. McDivitt. Players heading out onto the field. Today's player walkout is sponsored by Children's Hospital Colorado. 
Switchbacks looking for their first win of the year. In the 11, haven't been much better. It's a massive, pivotal moment for both of these teams as we make the starting 11 brought to you by Phil Long, beginning with James Chambers, Colorado Springs Switchbacks. Yeah, Colorado, it's going to be really interesting to see the approach that they take towards today's game. Obviously, they can't go too much longer without picking up a win. It's detrimental to the mentality of the coaching staff and the organization. They need to pick a win. They need to get confidence. It's going to be very interesting to see how the new signing performs today. On the opposite side for Indy 11, your eyes really are just attracted to that front four between Martinez, Guenzati, Ikoba, and Williams. It's maybe the best front four in all of USL Championship, but they haven't lived up to the billing yet. Yeah, Guenzati, obviously one of the leading goal scorers in the existence of the league. We spoke briefly about Blake, but really I think it starts with the defense being, having the capability of keeping clean sheets. Ten goals in the past three games is pretty diabolical defending, so I think they start today getting back to bases, learning how to keep a clean sheet. Blake Shoney knows how to put the ball in the back of the net up front. I think that is going to be the foundation that allows them to be successful going forward. Well, it's 40 degrees. It's been a mix of snow and rain in the gray skies overhead. Weather will certainly impact this one throughout. Juan Tejada gets us set. And we're underway from Weiner Field. From left to right in the white, it's Colorado Springs. From right to left in the red, it's Indy 11. Happy to have you along for this one with the longtime pro Chris Nurse. I'm Joe Malfa. And Joe, we spoke briefly about these rosters. Both boast extremely talented rosters. Colorado obviously made it to the quarterfinals last year. And Indy 11, I think if you follow USL Championship, everybody knows the talent that they have on this roster. We spoke about Blake. Gwenzai, some of the talent. So it's not a, a game that, with these 22 players that lacks quality. They've just been unable to win games so far this year. And whether that's been getting away from the basics of keeping clean sheets and being clinical in the final third, or just not being clinical in the final third, which has been the, the case for Colorado switchbacks. They've not created any, uh, too many opportunities. When we look at comparison of shots on target for both of these teams, Colorado switchbacks have created just nine shots on target this season in comparison to Indy 11, who've created 25 shots on target. So. You can see the disparity between the two. For Indy 11, their success is about defending, keeping clean sheets. For Colorado Switchbacks, it's their ability of being able to take chances and score goals. side for Matt Real. Again, the debuting left back on loan from Philadelphia Union for Colorado Springs. Now it's Wahab Akwe. And every line of this team for Colorado Springs, you've got a talent that either has been or is capable of being an all-league player in the USL Championship. It just doesn't jive with what the results have been. One goal in five games, no points in five games, all losses. For James Chambers, it's still a very positive attitude, as you alluded to, Chris. They feel that the performances have been better than the results, and it's just to find margins in the boxes where they have to improve. Maybe here through Tejada, it's loose in front. Damas! That's what they were hoping for! Less than three minutes in, Ronaldo Damas with his first of 2024. And we were discussing briefly before the game, Joe, about Damas getting his first goal. And it didn't take him long tonight whatsoever. We're in the first three minutes. He's got himself on the score sheet. But you can clearly see here why Indy 11 have problems. This defending is terrible. From the first player to the center back not marking to the goalkeeper letting it slip. It's an absolute giveaway chance to Colorado switchbacks. And Damas, doing what he's done, does best, has make, made them pay by taking advantage of it. They were waiting to find out when he might finally break through. James Chambers knew that once the breakthrough would come for a striker of Damas' capabilities, one becomes five, becomes 15 over the course of his season. And he finally has the first one. And that goal presented by Century Casinos, your hometown casino. Welcome to the winner's zone. Yeah, and goal scoring, a lot of it has to do with confidence. Sometimes once you get that first one, the floodgates open and you start getting that feeling and understanding of how to put the ball in the back of the net again. I'm sure Damas will be so happy and relieved 
to get that goal, especially in the opening three minutes of this game. And it's going to be interesting to see if he continues to build on his confidence now as the game progresses. For Indy 11, we, we made one of the keys of the game for them was being able to keep a clean sheet. And that was horrendous defending in the opening three minutes of the game to give away the opportunity. And, and now they find themselves 1-0 down. Ronaldo Damas on loan from Sundsvall in Sweden for the second year in a row. That was the club that purchased him for the lucrative deal from Orange County after Orange County's championship season when they won the title in 2021. And Damas was your title game MVP. From there, the year he spent in Sweden, saw him score five goals in 15 starts with two assists. Last year spent on loan with San Diego. Now this year, a season-long loan to Colorado Springs. Thomas with his first of the year. And his 26th in USL Championship. 11 of those came last season. Here again is how it happened through Hanya. And right there, it actually came off the left hand of Hunter Solt. So much going on in the first couple of minutes of this game, we didn't even have a chance to get to Hunter Solt, who's making his first start for Indy 11. Had been the backup for Yannick Ertl for the first six matches of the year. Hunter Solt's in on loan from the Portland Timbers. And just a miscue there. Not only his fault, to your point, others involved there as Thomas takes it again. And it was poor defense the entire way from Indy. But even at the very last bit of it, Sol Soltz could have had it. And you can see the threat when Damas makes runs in behind right now. India are very slow to react. Chapman Page, a very experienced defender at this USL level. A little bit guilty of reacting a little bit late when the ball's gone in behind or intercepting that first delivery across the box. So obviously making a start tonight, not the ideal start they would like to get off to. And then 1-0 down, a fairly straightforward finish at the back post from Damas. This corner brought to you by Pepsi. That's what I like. The in-swinger. No trouble for Salt. One of two players who are here on loan from the Portland Timbers for Indy 11. Got Salt in goal. And then Tega Ikoba up top. Forming that front four diamond with Martinez, Williams, and Guenzati. Play through again for Damas this time. The flag comes up. Chris, you can already see it. There's a different energy about Damas and this Colorado Springs attack just from that opening goal. Yeah, and he's finding little pockets right now. Although that was offside, there was nobody essentially trying to play him offside. He found himself offside. You didn't see the Indiana in the 11 defenders step up with the intent of catching him offside. So they need to pay a little bit more close attention to. He's picking up smart pockets in between the two center backs, and he has the speed, the quality, and the energy to get him behind and punish. So I think the Indy central center backs both Diz and Chapman Page have to do a little bit better job of staying tighter to him closer, being a little bit more cohesive together. Otherwise, it's going to be a long night. Finally settling things down through Lindley. Cam Lindley putting it over the top. Lindley was all league second team last year for Indy and two years ago with Colorado Springs, his former club, Foster or Tejada, and out for a goal kick. John McCauley, head coach of this Indy 11 side, struck some similar notes to what James Chambers had said for Colorado Springs, where performances, not all bad. It's those fine margins in the key moments where things haven't gone well for Indy 11. They've also navigated a lot of injuries in the early portion of the season throughout the roster, every level of the field. He admitted that it's taken some time to get used to for them to get into a rhythm. Said they could have been better about it and handled it better but did point out how difficult that has been. They've got a full allotment of health here in this one. Yeah, and as I was mentioning earlier, Joe, I was prodding James Chapman in, in our conversation this week. I was like, come on, tell us the honest conversations that have been had in the locker room. You, five games, lost five games. Like, things must have been getting heated. Conversations must have been heated. How's the intensity in training been, you know? What standards have the, been, have the players been meeting expectations? He said, no, he said he wouldn't change the intensity and the focus in training right now at all. He said that that's not the reason why they're not picking up results. He said sometimes things just don't go your way. Over the top to Foster. He's on side. Malik Foster off the bar. Damas was calling for it. Foster went for it alone. Maybe was it the right decision, but it nearly worked out. And we think about things not going your way. Uh, this is inches away from being a 2-0 lead in the opening 10 minutes. Does everything work, settles the ball down with his first touch. 
rockets it across the crossbar and it just bounces out an, at an angle that sends it out for a, a goal kick rather than nestling itself in the back of the net. Great start to this game from Colorado Switchbacks. And they just switched off there in the 11. Once they saw Damas was calling for it and was offside, they just let it go. Foster swoops in from an onside position. Now Damas calling for it again. Took himself offside. Damas leaves it. Hanya. We, we can say switched off, Joe, but in honesty, they've started this game defensively very poor. They look like a team that's conceded 10 goals in the past three games right now. And it doesn't look like much is about to change. Malik Foster powers it through. They could legitimately be 3-0 down with clinical finishing. It could be 3-0 down in the opening 10 minutes of this game, and it's game over. They're out of it. They've got to do a better job defensively. Player down on this side of the field for the switchbacks. Injury stop is brought to you by Common Spirit Health. It's Damas. There was a little bit of contact there and a brief penalty shout. He caught a stray forearm or elbow to the head. Couldn't quite tell exactly which part of the arm of Callum Chapman Page made contact with Damas. A closer look. Excuse me, that was Aiden Stanley coming across. And of course, Chapman Page is a stalwart defensive name that we associate with USL Championship now in Indy, spent time at Miami FC. He's obviously given a lot of responsibility for commanding and, and organizing this defense. Being one of the more experienced veterans in the back line, he's got to do a better job of getting the midfielders organized in front of him, but also getting O'Brien, Diz, Stanley, Lindley in good positions where they're not so defensively wide open. If we saw that it was a 5v2 counterattack out of, out of nowhere, they didn't get punished for this, on this occasion, but the opportunities that Colorado switchbacks are creating because of the lack of organization defensively for Indy 11, it's, it's eye-opening to say the least. Sean McCauley was happy with the defensive performance in their Open Cup match this week, their last showing. It came against third division MLS Next Pro Chicago Fire 2. So it's not the same level of competition by any stretch of the imagination. But Chris, th there are still some things in terms of the principles that are the same regardless of the opponent. Your positioning, things like that. Those are what they are, whether you're playing against a U10 team in a scrimmage or playing against Real Madrid. Those principles are intact, and that is something that Sean McCauley was happy with. We've already seen them in 10 minutes stray from those principles. Yeah, and uh, you know, being away from home, you're away from home at Colorado Switchbacks, a team that made the, the quarterfinal. So despite where they sit right now in the standings, you know that it's a very talented team offensively. So you can't afford to play wide open and leave your channels wide open, your defenses wide open, and give them opportunities and aspects. You've got to try and keep the game very compact, very tight. If you conceded 10 goals in your past three games, then how about we start by trying to keep our defense compact and tight and organized going into this game and then allow Blake and the attackers to do what they do and get yourself goals. But if you're going to be so wide open, I find it very challenging to see how they're going to continue to pick up results this season. Indy in the preseason power rankings among the top five. Colorado Springs pegged to do well as well. Two teams who went off postseason appearances, player for player. One of the top rosters in USL Championship. Has it panned out that way in the early going? We saw last year Colorado Springs had a penchant for being streaky. It'd be four or five wins, then four or five losses, and then maybe two or three ties, and back to a couple wins. So they're a streaky team, and before you know it, this is a team that could maybe be four wins and six losses as they're 0-5 right now. And we have a, a very privileged position of where we can sit and observe the game, Joe, we're armchair, armchair specialists or armchair <laughs> experts, so to speak. But you can see the distance between the lines of the defense and the midfield for Indy 11. There's tons of space in here. It's a, it's a dream for a number 10 to pick up the ball in some of those pockets. And the second ball that comes down after the defenders win it, there's so much space for Colorado Switchers to pick up that second ball and, and create goals for an opportunity. They've got to get the, the lines tighter when they don't have possession of the ball and make it more compact. There's too much distance between the lines right now. Pay. Howie Williams lays it off for Guanzati. Haven't called those names yet. They haven't found many entries into the final third. And given away by Koba. Tipped over the top for Damas. Advantage played. Tejada running with Damas, and now Damas is brought down. Yellow card first comes out for 
the initial infraction against Chapman Page. Lindley down. Ooh, a strong tackle there, to say the least. <laughs> and then Lindley with the foul against Damas. Chapman Page picked it up for that foul right there, the yellow. That's a frustration tackle there from Chapman Page. When you, when you start the game in the lackluster approach that Indiana have, and you've got Damas running in behind you, and then you get a yellow card like that, now, now you've got to be very careful for the remaining 75 minutes of this game. Excuse me, they did give one to Cam Lindley as well. He did not get away either. He picked one up for the foul against Damas. And the little card sponsored by Diversus Health, Mental Health, and Well-Being for All. Remember to take a moment to breathe. Back-to-back -back yellows before you could even breathe for Indy. And now Aiden Rocha picks one up. Referee not shy at all to brandish his cards early on in this game. Didn't quite see the infraction in that from the from the replay, but maybe it was something said. Quarter of an hour gone, and the pace has been frantic back and forth. The early goal scored by Ronaldo Damas in the third minute, his first of the year. Lake had it blocked. Brief shout for a handball, half-hearted. Seemed like the hands were tucked in from Wahab Akwe. There's Douglas. Tina is still trying to give and go with Augie Williams. Akwe clears. Credit to the fans who are out here in their numbers today in the snow. We thought we were going to see the orange ball, but <laughs> it looked like the snow hey Chris, settled down a little to, bit. To be, fair, to be fair, you're a South Florida guy, so snow to you <laughs> is a foreign concept. For people from Colorado Springs, this is a regular day, and here's an attack coming for Gwenzati. Gwenzati cut off. Martinez floats it over the top, loose in front. Coming through without confidence there, Christian Herrera. Left it there for the taking. First dangerous opportunity there from Indiana. Pay pulls up from near midfield. I mean, it's going to test the goalkeeper. <laughs> I can't say it's a difficult test, but it's a test. Yeah, that is an audacious effort to think he's going to beat Herrera from that distance, but give him credit for the confidence. It would have been some strike had that found its way to the back of the net, but that's a one in a million strike. <laughs> now, the old saying. If you don't buy a ticket, you can't win the raffle. Sometimes it's better <laughs> keeping that dollar in your back pocket and not even buying the ticket. Hey, they got they got a <laughs> shot on the statistics. If that counts go. for anything at this point. <laughs> Jack Blake. Sean McCauley very pleased with Jack Blake and just that sixth sense he has for when to make the run out of the midfield and join the attack. He was scoring all preseason. They were wondering if he could keep that pace going. He's never been a vaunted, noted goal scorer in his career. But that scoring pace from preseason has carried over to the tune of four goals in the regular season. And now it's Martinez who commits the foul. And Martinez joins the yellow card party as well. Of course, brought to you by Diversus Health, and there's been plenty of them early on. Yeah, the game hasn't been that aggressive or vicious for us to see four yellow cards in, in the opening 20 minutes. Kind of makes it, uh, players now a little bit cautious to go and tackle and be aggressive, because now they've seen the referee so quick to brandish your cards, it makes you a little bit apprehensive and timid in, in how you defend and how you close down players. So referees definitely sent a, sent a strong message on how it would be uh, overseeing that the, it is a little bit trivial, in all honesty. Maybe just for the tactical nature of it. We've seen a couple of those already, but outside of that, 
again, to your point, nothing has been vicious. It's still yielded. A grand total of four yellow cards already. And we'll take a look at the injury report brought to you by Common Spirit Health. Clean bill of health reported on the switchback side of the equation. Aiden Quinn missing for Indy. They hope to get him back, getting closer to the early summer months. And the, the good or bad of it is that when players are on yellow cards, now it plays into the coach's decision maker when it comes to substitutions. We know that the, the way the game is now, you can't afford to go down to 10 men. It's almost guaranteed you go down to 10, you're going to lose. So coaches now have to be like, OK, he's, he's on a yellow card. I'd like to keep him in the game, but I also don't want to go down to 10 men. And add one Tejada to the list. Before you know it, it's going to be like the late stages of a game of bingo. At some point, a number is going to get called, and <laughs> you're going to get bingo, and that bingo is going to be a red card because <laughs> almost everybody at this point is joining the yellow card party. And it's inevitable. If you look at none of the, the tackles are really rash tackles. If the referee stays consistent to the means that he's, he's dishing out yellow cards, it's going to be very difficult to finish this game with 22 players. Here's Dispey, 30-year-old from Cuba. Leads the team in clearances, been a rock at the back. Tanya from Matt Real. His insertion, Real. Moves Duplacroix to right wing back. Real steps in on that left side again just this week. Announced on loan from Philadelphia Union. Oh, it had been in the works for a little while before then. To your point, Chris, it wasn't a knee-jerk reaction to the 0-5 start. Something they've been working on. James Chambers and his past ties to Philadelphia Union, formerly in their academy. And that pipeline has just remained flowing ever since Brendan Burke took this job at Colorado Springs a couple of years back. His assistants have been promoted year over year to the head coaching job. All those guys with ties to Philly. So you see a loan like that. And, uh, you know, as you mentioned, it's not a knee-jerk uh, signing given their start because the, the issue that they've had so far this season has been the ability to score goals. Prior to today's game, they've only scored one goal. So if they were to make a sign-in based upon their start to the season, it would definitely be somebody who's going to come in, hit the, hit the ground running and put the ball into the back of the net. Given that it's a defensive player is coming, I, I envision you know, that he's going to be a leader on the, on the, on the field, be able to organise, have impact in the team's shape, that kind of a, a, an influence going forward because it's, it's clear as day that the, the struggle they've had so far this season is the ability to convert chances. Step by Josh O'Brien for Gwenzotti. Douglas Martinez. Some former Sacramento teammates going at it today. Malik Foster on that 2022 Sacramento side that made the deep open cup run. Teammate there of Douglas Martinez. That was the first... Uh kind of meaningful possession that Indiana, Indy 11 had sustained in the attacking half. Now it's Damas. Foster. Malik Foster slides it inside. What a ball that is. On the volley. And Rocha gets it all wrong. Yeah, wild volley there from Rocha. You could just see it. As he lines up to strike it, there's not too much belief. He just kind of kicks it, doesn't really believe when he kicks it. It's going to run in the back of the net, but a player with his ability, it's a great opportunity there to at least hit the target. Just needs to let it drop a little bit lower before he strikes it. Another good opportunity there for Colorado switchbacks. But for Indy 11, when they have got themselves into the attacking half, they've just been a little bit rushed in possession and, and turned over the ball needlessly. Literally just before that counter-attack for Colorado switchbacks, they had good sustained possession in the attacking half. And then just a little bit of impatience, they turn over possession. Koba loses it. And the USL on the CBS Networks continues in April. Mark your calendar, April 27th. That's a week from today. Tampa Bay Rowdies clash with New Mexico United. 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS Sports Network. Tejada says, look what I found after a couple of caroms comes away with it. Foster switches. 
Hanya. Unknown from Colorado Rapids. To the Loney, Matt Real from Philadelphia. They found different ways to bolster this roster. Colorado Springs. And again, littered with talent. Not a team that should be 0-5. But here they are, looking for their first point of the year. And as James James has alluded, it just takes a run of two or three games back to back to get themselves back up into those player positions. Losing five, unfortunately, probably knocks you out of contingency for being the number one regular season champions. Five games in the, in the opening five is probably too much to lose. You'll probably want to lose five over the course of the full season to have the opportunity to finish first. But very much still a lot of time to make the playoffs. Yeah, Pepsi corner squandered by the switchbacks. Salt puts it back into play. 21-year-old from Anchorage, Alaska. It's his hometown at 13 to join the Timbers Academy. Had eight starts in USL Championship in 2020. Since then, he's mostly been an MLS Next Pro with Timbers 2 or on the bench for the first team. Gets the loan this year. Almost a bit surprised to not see him starting early on behind Yannick Ertl. Chris, you know about it. So often you'll see these MLS first teams sending a player on loan with the intention of getting minutes, and there's almost a wink-wink handshake agreement like, hey, I don't really care if there's a competition, you're playing my guy, that's where we're loaning him to you. <laughs> so it was almost surprising to, to not see Salt get playing time early, knowing that that is the nature of some of those loan agreements at times. But six matches into the season, without the results going their way, they make a change in goal. Yeah, and for me, Joe, it, it's one thing getting the opportunity to go on loan, you still need to go and earn it and prove that you're better than what's at that club existing. And I think the head coach made a great decision here to not just give it to him. If he's going to get it, he's got, he's got to earn it. He's got to prove he's better and compete every day in training to earn that position. I think if you just give it to him, he's not going to value it as much as he would should he, should he have to earn it. And uh, obviously competition drives improvement. He's got to have somebody on his shoulder who's just as good as him, if not better, that's going to keep him at the top of his game on a daily basis. Salt all the way out to field this one. Two shots, one on target for Indy. They still don't have a touch, however, in the opposing 18-yard box. There's just been this force field around it for Colorado Springs. They have not allowed Indy any passage through, despite 63% of the possession. It's been a lot of empty calorie possession here in the middle of the midfield. And it's interesting to see when they build, despite playing a, a back four, you can see when they have possession of the ball, Lindley drops in between the two centre-backs, giving them a, a deep option, which obviously takes away from their numbers going forward. But it does allow their centre-backs and them to have good possession of the ball defensively, but they need to get it higher up the field if, they, if their aim is to create goal-scoring opportunities and put the ball in the back of the net. Right now, there's a lot of passing between Lindley and the two centre-backs side to side, but not much creating when they're going forward. Again, it's Lindley to a center back, and Dee's pay goes for Jack Blake. And we spoke about the threat of Blake, him being one of the top scorers in the team this season. The majority of the areas where he's got his touch spoke too soon. Here he is in a dangerous position. Blake, service, dealt with. Aiden Rocha heads away. Callum Chapman Page. Well, he saw what Dee's pay did earlier <laughs> and thought that he would try to mimic it. At least Dispey got it on target. That's a centre-back's <laughs> shot, to say the least. <laughs> They've had one each. I think that might be enough for the evening. <laughs> but we were speaking briefly about where Jack Blake has, has got his touches, and they're not really in, in threatening positions where you feel like he's going to score from. He's dropping a little bit deep, dropping into wide areas. If you're defenders, you're happy for Jack Blake to get touches out there because you know they're not areas where he's going to punish you and put the ball in, ball in the back of the net. So if you're forcing Blake to get his touches deep, you're, you're essentially very happy. Yeah, we joke, but you never know when you're going to have your Vincent Company 2019 moment. <laughs> it could come at any time for any player. The center backs will have at it until that moment comes. Hey, sometimes center backs are <laughs> great at striking the ball. Sometimes they're the best penalty takers because they just no holds barred. Break the keeper's wrists. Sometimes you break a fan's wrist <laughs> because it's so off target. <laughs> Speedy Williams. One of the 
players maybe not talked enough about around the league. It's just the presence he brings in the midfield. His 223rd league appearance today and his 201st start. Last match was his 200th milestone start. Tejada finds Damas. Some space here for Ronaldo Damas. Continues to take that space. He goes for goal, and it's touched around the post by Salt. A little bit different when it's Ronaldo Damas than a center back yeah. going for it from there. Yeah, this, this strike was a little bit weird. It looked like it had a little bit of float on it, had a little bit of drive, a little bit of power. Kind of just hangs in the air a little bit. Not sure if it was going on target, but keeper was taking no chances. Gets a touch on him, pushes it away for a corner kick. Hero Price corner kick, invest with confidence. Aiden Rocha will deliver at the half hour mark. Colorado Springs one, Indy nil. Looking to add to the lead. It's Rocha, it's off target on the header from Matt Mahoney. to have you with us for this one this evening on ESPN Plus. The longtime pro Chris Nurse, I'm Joe Malfa. Goal came three minutes in from Ronaldo Damas, his first of the year. After 11 goals last regular season, and three more in the postseason. Took him a little while to get off and running. A striker of his caliber, once you get one, the confidence comes with it, and he's popped up in some dangerous spaces since then. Ronaldo Springs have been lurking, looking to tack on. It hasn't come yet for them. Now it's Indy through Stanley. And in Stanley, the response from Augie Williams. Their first real threatening moment of the day. They cash in and we're level again. Just one moment of brilliance to get Indy 11 back onto level pegging. Blake here with the ball into the channel. The work is done with this delivery from Stanley, whips it around the defender, and Williams just arriving in the middle of the six yard box at the right time, just guides it on frame. All the work is done and the pace on the delivery of the ball. He just needs to get good connection on it, and there's no way that Herrera is keeping out at the back of the net. For a game that Colorado Switchbacks have dominated so far, Indy 11 with moment, one moment of brilliance have found themselves back, level pegging, 1-1. One, one. Augie Williams has been outstanding the last couple of seasons. Last year with 13 goals, the year prior with 16. This is his second goal of 2024. And his first in nearly a month. Have to go back five matches ago against Sacramento Republic when he scored to make it 1-1. We spoke briefly about the quality. We spoke briefly about the quality that both these two rosters possess. And, and that was an example of it. Absolutely blinding ball from Stanley on the left-hand side, whips it in. And we know Williams has the ability to score goals, but he needs the delivery. He needs the service. And Stanley gives him that, exactly what he needs. The ball delivered into the right space, the right areas where he can just attack it, guide it on frame, gets his team the equalizing goal. Advantage was played there. I wonder if they might have rather had the free kick in the end, Colorado Springs. The ball was a bit heavy through from Matt Mahoney. Definitely seeing two very evenly matched teams right now. And goals change games, so inevitably now the, the momentum was heavily in favor of Colorado switchbacks. But now I expect Indy 11 to build a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum now getting that equalizing goal. It was interesting uh, listening to a podcast this week with Bodardi that had Blake on and they were asked, if you could give, give advice to your 17-year-old self, what would it be? And I think this advice could be given to them in their, in their current state. It was, don't feel bad for yourself, don't throw in the towel, and embrace the low moments. Given the start to the season, they could apply all that things, not just to the 17-year-old self, they could apply this to the situation that they find themselves in now. And I think uh, Augie Williams definitely is not feeling sorry for himself. He's taking every opportunity that comes his way, and a big important one that got, got his team back into the game right now. All league first team. All League second team, those accolades in his back pocket. Augie Williams coming into the season. One of the biggest moves of the year, going from Charleston, last year's runners-up, to Indy 11. All eyes were on him. 
was his 68th career USL championship goal. And I think some of the points they're alluding to, like there's always going to be a, a moment when good teams go for a bad spell. But good teams, when they go for a bad spell, they, they often find a way to still win games. Both of these teams have been going through a bad spell where they haven't been winning games. And of course, these are the moments where you really find, about, find out about players and their character, where they have to dig deep and turn these situations around. And I think this is a, the situation both these teams find themselves in is a real character test. That if they have the minerals to, to do what's necessary to then pick up those wins, to, for the team to regroup, to be clinical in the final third offensively and to be resolute defensively in order to keep clean sheets. Obviously, that's not a possibility for both teams tonight, but having the ability to win the game, whatever that may, may take or whatever is needed to come away with three points. McDivitt Law Firm, corner kick in the 11. Double down here in rapid succession. He's ninth all time in USL Championship with 68 goals. Augustine Williams now four behind his teammate Sebastian Guenzati. It could be a scenario this season if Augie Williams goes on a little bit of a run. He might tie his teammate and they can have a little bit of friendly competition as they try and continue climbing the all time USL Championship goal scoring list. Ten minutes to go in this half. New life for Indy. After they went down three minutes in. That was their first legitimate shot on target. I say legitimate because Dease Pay had that shot from <laughs> 45 yards out. That was on target. But we're not counting that. We're not counting that. Technically it does. <laughs> Realistically it shouldn't. But the first threatening shot on target of the match produces the goal for Indy. Now from the corner, Stanley whips it in. And a little bit of a... MMA bout on the goal line between Chapman Page and Christian Herrera. Yeah, I think Herrera has to be a, a little bit careful here. If the referee has eyes on him, I don't, I don't think there's any way he cannot give a, a penalty kick in this situation. Herrera has his arms wrapped around Chapman Page and it just kind of throws him to the ground after. There's, I don't think there's any question about it. If the referee sees it, it's a penalty, but I think Herrera can count himself lucky that the referee didn't see it and he needs to be a little bit more smarter in his decision making. The last thing he wants to do is give away such a, a trivial penalty kick. You don't want things to snowball all of a sudden. Pardon the pun given today's weather, where Indy gets that goal and then just continues to find a way. Because again, with the talent they have, I don't want to sound like we're hammering home this point too much for both of these teams, but the talent is there. And all of a sudden, for either of these teams, they could break out and they could rattle off multiple wins in a row. They have that level of talent. They were that high in the preseason power rankings. It hasn't clicked for whatever reason. Here they go again. Martinez for Guenzati as the snowflakes fall once more. Guenzati lost his, his balance, but the build-up play was good. When Blake picks up the ball in the middle of the park, he has an ability to make things happen. He has fantastic ten technique. He's able to switch the point of attack. He sees a forward pass and can play those through balls. And as we've spoken about, he has the ability to finish off plays himself. Blake is a, a key player for Indy 11 in the center of the park. They've got to find him the ball more often. It's one moment of brilliance that's got themselves back in the game, but in their build-up play, they need to find the ball at Blake's feet consistently. Well, this is one of six games going on right now. Ten minutes to go. Birmingham up 1-0 on the road against Miami. Scoreless just out of the half between Tampa Bay and El Paso. 2-2 with a dozen minutes to go between North Carolina and New Mexico. 1-0 Rhode Island on the road over Vegas and 1-0 Memphis at home over Monterey Bay. It's a big day for the road teams earlier in the day. Charleston 4-1 on the road over Tulsa. San Antonio 3-1 on the road over Hartford. And Louisville 1-0 on the road over Loudoun. The only home team that has registered a victory today is Detroit 3-1 over Oakland. Still a long time to go into this game, but realistically for both of these teams, a tie isn't a, a bad result. When you're on a losing streak, you always try to say, get something out of the game, stop the rot. And a, and a point is normally the first means to doing it. You go for a point and then obviously you, you try to convert those ties into wins. So based upon where these two teams are right now and the form that they're in, a tie isn't the worst result, but inevitably both teams want to try and get the win. The snow falling once again. A wintry mix here in Colorado Springs, even though it's not winter anymore. The ball did stay in. Foster, it's settled by Damas, looking for some space to hit it. Tejada! Slice too much in the end. I don't want to be biased, Joe, but I really wanted this to end in a goal. Number one, <laughs> the fundamental basis, 
In U12, you're told, play to the whistle. And Foster does an excellent job here. He doesn't give up. When Lindley stops running and thinks the ball out of play, Foster doesn't give up, carries on playing, delivers a great ball into the box. Damas does well to get it under control, but just unable to get it out of his feet and Tahada shanks it wide. But tremendous mentality from Foster here to not give up until he hears the whistle. Lindley stops and almost his team gets punished because he gives up too, too early before the goal's out of play. And Foster is the one who makes something happen out of nothing. Stanley, please pay some tight quarters there. Tejada pressuring Lindley, safely gets it back for Salt. When you're, when you're an attacker or a striker, an offensive player, sometimes you have to create your own luck by chasing or believing in something that, that you may not have the advantage on it. That was the exact situation there with Foster. He has no advantage there, he's 10 yards behind Lindley. The ball's rolling out of play, he doesn't give up on it, keeps it in play, delivers a great ball into the box. Darmus just unable to get a shot off, but he creates his own luck by just not giving up on the ball, irrespective of not having the advantage. Speedy Williams. Speedy Williams wants to go for goal. That's it in the last row. Select is the official match ball supplier of the USL Championship and many elite leagues throughout Europe. Visit us.select-sport.com for the latest select product specials and more. Select the player's choice. Williams with the shot there from distance. Snow good. <laughs> hey, I, I had the snowball one, but that was more unintentional earlier. That was full intent, and you know what? I appreciate it. <laughs> if you don't laugh at your own jokes, we will. <laughs> We've reached the dad joke portion of the match. Away. Duclaquois. Out for it. Now it's Real. Precipitation, and I call it that because it's a bit of everything. It's ice, it's snow, it's rain. The precipitation coming down a lot harder now, harder than it has been at all at any point in this match. And what that does, that as the snow melts, it makes the surface just a little bit more slippy. So you can now see the ball zipping along the surface a little bit more. Perfect for strikers when they get in the attacking third to take low shots. Hopefully we'll deviate from the high shots that we've seen going over the, the, the crossbar. Now if they're able to zip it along the floor, the ball picks up speed, which can be a big problem for defenders for the, and for the goalkeepers. The goalkeeper saves it often, it, it falls out for the rebound and a striker of good instincts is there to tap in the second ball. So expect to see the, the pace and the tempo of the game increase a little bit, but shots from distance along the floor prove to be very challenging for the goalkeeper in these circumstances also. Malik Foster delivers. East Bay heads away. E. Williams, a little crab walk on the turf. Never did touch it, so it's in these possession. I so appreciate how unfazed the fans are. This is normal for this region. Anybody else who's watching from a lot of other places around the country is probably tuning in and uh, thanking their lucky stars that they are at home on their couch. This is what you sign up for moving around these parts. This is a normal Saturday afternoon in late April. Some picturesque views in the back, mountains covered in snow. Beautiful Saturday evening in Colorado. Real, excuse me, Hanya picks it up. Real calling for it. Hanya lays it off instead for Speedy Williams. Mahoney, Tejada, operating more underneath in this half space now on Tejada. Foster feeds it across. Rocha, Real, it's a proper build up now from Colorado Springs. Almost leaked through for Tejada. Koba lost it. Tejada had it for a moment before Ikoba did well to win it back. That's very, very lazy defensively. Aiden Stanley just did not even see Damas coming. Yeah, and I think that this is a sympathy decision from the from the linesman here. Obviously, it's clear as day that Damas is the one who gets the last touch on the ball. 
But it's actually a foul from Stanley. So instead of giving the foul in favour of Damas, the linesman gives the throw in in favour of Colorado Switchbacks. And now they get a corner brought to you by Tiro Price. Invest with confidence. Again, we, we've seen a mentality through the team of Colorado Switchbacks. It was Foster just now not giving up on a ball that he had no business getting close to. Now we're seeing Damas closing down Stanley when he thinks he has time and space and winning the ball. And now they find himself pinning Indian in the 11 in their defensive third and winning corners, winning free kicks and creating opportunities. Another corner for Aiden Rocha. Swinger. Well. Foster goes for goal. What a hit that was and what a save it was from Hunter Salt. Struck it well. It just kept drifting through the elements. And a heavy challenge there from Hanya. It's great play. Great play there from Foster. Just. The throw in lets the ball run across his body, sees the keeper off his line and tries to, to hit it over him into the far corner. It looked a little bit more straightforward for Salt to deal with, but it must have dipped and been swerving at the last moment, and he does well to keep his hands on it and push it away. But brilliant improvisation and creativity there from Foster. Four minutes of stoppage time brought to you by TikTok Shop. And we've spoken despite 1 1 going into, well, what could be 1 1 going into half time. Colorado Switchbacks have been the better team and created more clear-cut chances. There's one moment of brilliance from Indy 11 between Stanley and Williams that got themselves back into the game, but the performance so far from Indy 11 has been very underwhelming. They've got to do a lot better. There's been no clear way of how they've scored, how they're creating goal-scoring opportunities. They haven't really got the ball out to Stanley enough to say that's their consistent pathway to get the ball into the box and, and, and get the ball in service to Williams. And they've hit a lot of long diagonal balls that have even been turned over in possession or just gone out of place. So it's been a little bit unclear of how Indy 11 go about breaking down Colorado switchbacks, but I will say that Jack Blake, when he does get in possession of the ball, he floats, you can see, he floats into these little pockets and tries to get touches on the ball. But there just hasn't been enough chemistry and fluidity in their play to break down Colorado switchbacks on a, on a consistent basis. There's Guenzati floating out wide. Aiden Stanley whips it in, punched away awkwardly by Herrera. Thought he might have been able to catch it. Blake, awkward moment there. Blake comes through with it, and it's a handball. Josh O'Brien just got in the way of a downtrodden Jack Blake, who seemed a bit annoyed with his teammate. As you mentioned, Joe, when that, that cross comes in, it's straight into goalkeeper territory. You're expecting Herrera here to, to claim that with two hands and keep his team in possession rather than punching it. He wasn't under threat from any attackers, and it was a fairly straightforward cross. Is it just not wanting to risk it slipping through your hands in these elements? Yeah, I think that as it gets a little bit slippery, we, we mentioned, but top caliber goalkeeper there claims out the area and keeps his team possession and probably kills the clock a little bit going towards half time. Uh, as you saw, the ball went anywhere when he punched it there, and in the 11, we're, we're almost about to get another opportunity on goal. Jack Blake might have had goal number five on the year. If not for Josh O'Brien getting involved. A little miscommunication between the two. Here's Hanya. We did pick up a yellow card moments ago, brought to you by Diversus Health. It's a grand total of six yellow cards out there, three aside in this first half. A minute and a half remaining of the four minutes that were added. Shepherded back for Herrera. It's becoming more rain than snow now. Precipitate, precipitation, excuse me, still coming down. Nicoba feathers it through. No back post run from Douglas Martinez. Seemed like Augie Williams is having some words with him after it. Yeah, that wasn't the worst ball from Nicoba, but there was just nobody making a run. If, you, if somebody were making a diagonal run towards the back post off the blind side of the defender, probably an easy tapping, but he put the ball into an area where there was nobody making a run, so you have to question whether it was the right decision or not. Maybe he needed to keep possession there and be a little bit more patient in the build up. Very 
expansive first 45 minutes. Teams utilizing all the space. Similarly constructed, opposing 4-2-3-1s formationally. Tactically, they like to spread it out, keep the ball, quickly break when they can in transition. So it's made for an aesthetically pleasing first half to the casual observer. 15 total shots, five on target, a goal each. And a lot of end-to-end -end action as the first half comes to an end, 1-1 between Colorado Springs and Indy. Yeah, I think as the game progressed, Indy 11 got a little bit better organized defensively. The opening in 10, 12 minutes was an absolute shambles, but they managed to calm things down a little bit. Going into halftime, level pegging, 1-1. One, one. Colorado Springs, winless. Five matches, five losses. Indy 11, they've struggled as well through six matches. A win, a drop, and four losses. Two very hungry teams today, and they've been playing like it. It was Ronaldo Damas just three minutes in. Augie Williams, 31 minutes in, and we head to the break, all level at one. More to come from Widener Field. You know I got two home runs. You got two jacks. And then my grand slam, uh, I signed the ball for you. Okay. And it says, Papa, I love you. Why did you do that? Because you taught me everything about baseball. I'm so sweet. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. The moment you call McDevitt, an action plan is put into place right away to get you the help you need. Each case and each client is different, with different needs and solutions. Your attorney and team immediately investigates every aspect of your crash and injuries. We track down all the paperwork and deal directly with the insurance company for you. We keep you in the loop every step of the way, fighting to get you max money for your injuries. And you never pay us a dime until we get money for you. McDivitt. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. 1-1 one, one at the break as the snow continues to fall here. That time score brought to you by Capelli Sport as the switchbacks and Indy 11 are both hoping to get back on track after a rocky start to the season. And it's time to tonight honor tonight's healthcare professional of the match, which is Jason Sean, a clinical pharmacist at the Penrose Hospital. Thank you, Jason, for all you've done to help our community. The healthcare professional of the match sponsored by Dyson Plumbing and Heating. It's hard to believe that we're entering our 10th season. We set out on a mission to bring professional sports to Colorado Springs, but we quickly realized that it's about much more than that. It's about you. It's about us. It's about community. Many of you have been here since the beginning, some of you only recently. But for the last 10 seasons, we've been building something truly special through the highs and the lows, we know we can always count on you. And that's why we do it for the Springs. 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 Do it for the 
Springs. For the Springs is a reminder of why we come to work every day, why we put our games on in the field, why we shake hands, celebrate, hug, give high fives around the stadium. We're here for the community. We're here for the Springs. We're here to build relationships and tell stories. When termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. you hurt, but pain can be mastered if you know the way. Fight back with Tiger Balm's legendary herbal power. Trusted for over a hundred years, our proven blend of camphor, menthol, and essential oils tames pain with the strength and speed of the tiger so that you can rise above pain and get back to living. This is the way of the tiger. This is where he reeks. Jennings, 1v1! Got under it. Level! New Mexico! Goal! Looks great. Termites show up, so do we. Terminix it. to Widener Field, where it's one-to-one. -one. Halftime score brought to you by Capelli Sport. Early goal for the switchbacks. Later goal in the first half for Augie Williams and Indy 11 after Ronaldo Damas opened the scoring. But there's more than just one competition going on right now here around USL Championship. Earlier this week, we watched the round of 32 in the US Open Cup. Saw plenty of USL Championship talent coming through, including Loud United on penalties. We saw Louisville City come through. Also great to see some USL League One teams pulling through like Charlotte Independence and South Georgia Tormenta. Yeah, I think if you, you're looking at the screen right now, that's the result that stands out to you. South Georgia Tormenta FC 4, Miami FC 2. Fall from grace to say the least for Miami FC. Such a, a rich reputation and a little bit of a disappointing result there. Yeah, there's some more interesting results as well. El Paso have started the season in a really difficult way, and it continued in that level of difficulty, losing a penalty to Union Omaha. But Birmingham Legion, sometimes, Chris, the cup is what gets you going. They've stumbled out of the gates to some degree. They were down in this game. They battled back to win it. And oh, by the way, now they're winning today. So maybe they've used that to parlay some momentum of their own. Yeah, cup competitions are a little bit different because you know that it's win or go home. You, you have to leave everything on the field on that occasion or you, you're out of the competition. In league play, you obviously know that you can make the playoffs, you can sweep through and then get into the postseason and obviously go on and win the big trophy that everyone talks about. But cup mentality is give everything on the night, go hard or go home. And we've got a couple weeks remaining now until the round of 32. After the third out action that we saw, round of 32 is coming up. I've got some MLS teams who have entered as well. We've got some USL on um, USL action there with Orange County and Loudoun in a cross country affair. But one of the ones that sticks out here is going to be that matchup between Pittsburgh Riverhounds and FC Tulsa. 
Those two have been different to start the year so far in USL Championship. Pittsburgh last year, top of the league in the Eastern Conference, stumbling out of the gates. Tulsa has been very positive. Yeah, and, uh, we're reaching this stage where you can separate the men from the boys, but obviously Houston Dynamo FC being the current champions will be out to defend their title. They take the US Open Cup very seriously. Great opportunity for USL Championships to measure themselves up against some of the best teams in the country. And the one that I'm looking at here, I know we're a USL Championship show right now, but USL League One, all part of the family, all under the umbrella. Union Omaha went ahead and made the quarterfinal in 2022. Who did they lose to? It was Sporting Kansas City <laughs> on the road in that one. Now they get them at home. That's the fixture to circle. And of course, Sporting Kansas City have a very rich history in the US Open Cup. But also, you look at Seattle Sounders FC versus Louisville City FC. Some exciting uh, finger licking fixtures to say the least. Yeah, two flag bearers of their respective leagues, Seattle and MLS, Louisville here in USL Championship. And speaking of cups, one of this year's most exciting new events is the USL Jägermeister Cup. This in season cup competition features USL League One teams in a World Cup style tournament that is sure to thrill fans. And that already gets going this weekend. First match day is April 27th and 28th. All of the USL Jägermeister Cup matches are exclusively on ESPN+. Plus. And some of these teams, Chris, are already used to that cup competition now because of Open Cup. And Tormenta, again, we highlighted before, coming off that win over Miami, they would like to continue that success going forward. And it's against the team in Charlotte who also came through in penalties. Yeah, I think it's always great when we get cup competition and more fixtures. As Pep Guardiola alluded to today, sometimes we have to be careful in overloading in overloading the players because we want to keep them fit, we want to keep them healthy, and we want to see the best product on the pitch. So exciting times ahead. And plenty of cups all around between Open Cup and Jägermeister Cup. But you've also got plenty of regular season action as well. One half down, one half to go here in this regular season matchup between the Colorado Springs Switchbacks and Indy 11. 1-1 one, one through 45. Through the snow, the second half is on the way. at Widener Field. Jason Aldean he is fine. We're celebrating 719 Day in Colorado Springs with country's biggest star and you. Tickets on sale now at switchbacksfc.com or y969.com. You know I got two home runs. You got two jacks. And then my grand slam. Uh, I signed the ball for you. Okay. And it says, Papa, I love you. Why did you do that? Because you've taught me everything about baseball. Oh, I'm coming back. I'm so sweet. Injured in a crash? Get McDivitt and you get a firm dedicated to every single detail of your case. We have the knowledge and resources to investigate the crash and your insurance company's small print. Details matter. That's why we dive deep into every aspect of your case. This gives us the firepower we need to make the insurance company pay you the money you deserve. We never ask you to pay a penny until we get you max money for your injuries. Online at McDivittLaw.com. McDivitt. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. Take a look at the highlights from half number one, brought to you by Broadmoor Cryotherapy. A goal aside, and it started early, three minutes in for Ronaldo Damas. Yeah, nightmare start for Indy 11, but brilliant from Colorado switchbacks. Good play here. Ball comes into the middle. Damas, this is not easy at all. Going away from goal, guides it back into the corner, gives his team the 1-0 lead. How did he generate any power on this header? Snap back of his neck, you see, <laughs> just snaps his neck into the corner. Not a moment that Indy 11 would want to relive too many times. And that was the first of his season here in 2024. It took a while for them to find that breakthrough, Indy, but it would come 
through an equally terrific but equally slow starting striker in Augie Williams. Yeah, and it's probably been the three most lively players for Indy today. Blake playing the ball into the channel, fantastic delivery from Stanley. Williams just uses the pace on the ball to guide it into the back of the net, equalizing goal for Indy 11 despite being the lesser team in the opening half. His second of the season and his first in five games. A look at the stats brought to you by Redmore Cryotherapy. It's 10 to 5, it's 3 to 2 on target. Possession goes Indy's way, but 1 1 where it matters most. And it's, I would still say, Colorado Springs who have maybe found the more dangerous moments in Indy. Yeah, for sure. The possession that Indy have had, and we spoke about it, has been between Lynn. Lindley, Diz, and Chapman Page at the back, passing the ball in, in the defensive third or at the halfway line amongst the defenders, whereas Colorado Springs have done a better job of creating goal scoring opportunities in the final third. They probably had two or three chances in the first 10 minutes that could have put them 3-0 up had they been a little bit more clinical and a little bit of luck from the crossbar. We saw one bounce out just off the line. So I think in terms of creating opportunities to be purposeful with their possession, despite not leading the numbers, Colorado Springs have been the upper team. However, we're into the second half now, still a ton of time to play. It's going to be interesting to see the reaction from Indy 11 in the second half. Indy from left to right in the red. Colorado Springs from right to left in the white. The snow picked up a bit during the break, and it continues to fall here at Widener Field. Happy to have you with us this evening alongside longtime pro Chris Nurse. I'm Joe Malfa. 0-5 Colorado Springs. Indy with a win, four losses, and a draw. Two teams with loads of talent. Off to slow starts, hoping today could be the jump starter for their season. <laughs> We're getting into whiteout conditions here now. The big white fluffy stuff falling, the hardest it has. I've got the white ball out there. I don't think we need the yellow or orange ball yet, but <laughs> give it some time. And uh, as you can see, the, the visibility does become challenging when the snow is falling this hard, not just for ourselves in the commentary booth, but also for the players on the pitch, it becomes a little bit... A challenge and we can see it dying down a little bit now though so hopefully it will be nothing too drastic and it won't negatively impact the flow of play too much april showers bring may flowers but what about april snowstorms That's six yellow cards from that first half three aside alan chapman page cam lindley douglas martinez for indy powering through here it's hanya losing his footing but not enough to maybe go down and try and draw that penalty. On the other side, it's the aforementioned Hanya with Juan Tejada and Aiden Rocha, the three yellows for Colorado Springs. And as we spoke about, we wonder how those yellow cards will impact the manager's choices in their substitutions as the game progresses. Speedy Williams, Malik Foster offside. That's one of those where you just lose track of where you are. No reason to be in an offside position for Malik Foster. Surprisingly, the linesman didn't put his flag up to <laughs> bring play back. If the snow gets heavy enough, those white jerseys for Colorado Springs are going to have a little camo effect out there on the field. really a situation where the players have to be exercising the utmost focus. The snow just provides a, a little bit of a extra distraction and difficulty and you really have to keep your eye on the ball. Make sure you're tracking runners. Maybe sometimes you're probably going to have to take that extra touch to secure possession and instead of being able to play in one touch, you're probably going to have to take two or three just to ensure you don't give away possession of the ball needlessly. Clipped over the top for Jack Blake. Trying to center it for Augie Williams. Off the chest, Guenzotti deflected! That was a difficult one to deal with for Christian Arena. The deflection allowed it to rainbow up over the top, but he kept it out. Yeah, Herrera does ever so well to keep his eye on the ball here. The deflection really does take a, a wicked ricochet, and I thought it was going over him, to be fair. I thought it just got over him, but he does ever so well here, just to take a little leap at the last moment to tip it over the crossbar. Hero Price corner. Placed down by Aiden Stanley. It's 
Stanley, low driven ball. Thomas, yeah, right back to Indy. Stanley, step over to the end line. Stanley, it's off of him last, it'll stay in. Martinez, trying to leave it for Stanley. He wasn't keen on taking it. Tejada with space, Damas streaking with him. It's a two on one here. Tejada with Damas, Tejada. Just waited and waited and lost it. Great play from him. It's great defending there from Diz. Tejada probably lost control of the ball a little bit there. It was a phenomenal opportunity on the counter attack, two against one, but Diz did well to delay, hold his ground, and then at the right moment stepped forward to win the tackle. But it started with, again with Foster playing that three ball for Tejada from a deeper position. But good defending there from Diz in that situation. Supposed to be a through ball for Williams. Nicoba ended up getting a foot to it. You can see right away Lindley pointing behind him. He had to say, no, no, that was for Augie. This one gets to Augie and he gets in behind. Flag stays down. Williams. Martinez. Awkward bit of defending there as it comes off of Wahab Akwe. Could stay in for Herrera. Maybe the first instance where we've seen the surface having a, an impact on play. The ball just zips off the surface a little bit quicker than the players have been used to so far in this game. And it really does prove to be challenging once that surface gets slick. The ball can pick up speed so quickly. Touch, it's Blake, he's taken down. Blake doesn't get the call. And those are the moments where he just sneakily leaks out of the midfield. Your attention is on Martinez and Guenzotti and Augie Williams, and all of a sudden Blake comes through, and it's why he has four goals this season already. And he finds himself in great positions there. Great little pocket he finds himself in. Let's the ball run across his body. Probably can feel a little bit hard by, done by that the referee doesn't give that decision. He does play for it and takes the contact from the defender, but the referee wasn't having any of it. Hanya chips it. Damas waiting, headed away. Waited for it a bit too much. And then Josh O'Brien cuts in front. Good defending there from O'Brien. Ronaldo Damas was in a, a great position at the back post. Good play here from Hanya. Just hangs it up at the back post and leaves it there for Damas to attack. But O'Brien was in a good position to defend it well. This corner brought to you by Pikes Peak National Bank. Taken quickly, Rocha settled down for the volley that's over the bar by Yosuke Hanya. Hanya will win the opportunity back. We spoke about the, using the surface to your benefit. He zips this along the floor. You never know how it's going to pick up speed off the floor. It could ricochet off a defender's shin, end up in the back of the net. He just has to hit the target, get the ball on frame in those situations, and you never know what could happen. That's a great opportunity there for Hanya to give his team the go-ahead goal. And joined on February 23rd, season-long loan from Colorado Rapids. Hanya last year, MLS Next Pro, best 11. 13 goals, 9 assists for the first place, Colorado Rapids 2. Blake. Augie Williams read that pass back, but not quite able to latch on to it. Damas nods it down for Tejada. It's Juan Tejada. Chapman Page has a yellow, has to be careful. Wins it cleanly. Akwe. Coming over this year from RGV. We said goodbye to RGV here in USL Championship. Last two years there allowed Akwe to really break out in his career. Had been more of a bit player and an afterthought at times for Richmond and Loudon before then. Became an all-league second team player with RGV. 
good build up here from Colorado Springs. Just being patient in their possession. Clipped in behind by Speedy Williams on the ground looking for Tejada. It was the right idea, just didn't quite have the quality in the pass to execute. Dispe carried it about 60 yards and then just gave it away. He thought the runner was going up the left side in Blake. Thomas lost his footing, leaning into Chapman Page again, who's on a yellow. Got the arm up around the neck of Damas. Surprising the referee didn't blow for a free kick there. Don't think it would have been a sending off at a second yellow, but a free kick perhaps at least. Chapman Page has to be careful with, with his defending though. He can't afford to be grabbing players around the neck and when he's sitting on a yellow card already. It's a very easy decision for the referee to make. Given away, Douglas Martinez was gifted to him by Lacroix. Martinez for Blake, looking for Augie Williams. It's all the way out for a Colorado Springs throw. Yeah. USL Championship is on CBS Sports and ESPN platforms all season long. You can catch live matches and expert analysis every day on the CBS Sports Galazzo Network and ESPN+. Plus. Go to uslchampionship.com for the complete USL TV listings. A little bit heavy there, that cross from Blake, but he finds himself involved in every pos everything positive for Indy 11 going forward in the attacking third. Either of these sides might dip into the bench and make that first change, ticking toward the hour mark. Foster ran out of steam. Ikoba. Elsewhere, it's one to one between Tampa Bay and El Paso with three minutes to play. 2-0 Rhode Island over Vegas with 40 minutes to play. And 1-0 Memphis over Monterey Bay with a half an hour remaining. Scores that just went final. Birmingham 1-0 over Miami on the road. New Mexico 3-2 over North Carolina on the road. We have still only seen one home team win today. That is Detroit City over Oakland Roots. Louisville, San Antonio, Charleston, Birmingham, New Mexico, all winners on the road. Rhode Island looks like they're going to contribute to that list up 2-0 on Las Vegas. Colorado Springs do not want to be added to that list of home teams to lose today. It would mean 0-6 to begin the season. A team that had such high hopes after last year's quarterfinal. What happened to home field advantage, John? <laughs> the familiar, familiarity of your surroundings give you an advantage over the opponents who travel, don't train at the facility, don't necessarily play many games at the facility. I think what it is is a great example of something Sean McCauley pointed out in our chat this week. There's no easy look out, almost given away by Akwe with Williams lurking. Two-footed challenge in for Akwe. And Wahab Akwe, what color is this card going to be? It's red. I thought it might be. He went in with two feet, and he is gone. That vastly changes the equation. And given the consistency of the referee and what he's given for yellow cards, inevitably, this tackle is a little bit more aggressive, a little bit worse than Chapman Pages. And for me, it's a yellow, but in consistency of how the referees called the game today, it definitely is a, a red card in, in uh, today's, this fixture today. Red card brought to you by Diversus Health. It's unfortunate because he uh, actually has decent possession of the ball and his touch gets away with him and he ends up making it a two-foot tackle. We call it touch tackle and that tackle ends up sending him for an early shower with a red card. I'll stray from you on it. I did see it as a red. Coming in, studs exposed, two-footed challenge. Make a compromise, we could call it in that orange, cor <laughs> orange card category where... <laughs> it's the referee's discretion. He actually has that. The pass comes into him. He tries to get it under control. It gets away from him a little bit, and then 
It's the tackle that follows. Have a look at it again. You're getting, you're getting a red card when you're in possession of the ball. It's not like the opponents are in possession of the ball. Akwe had the possession of the ball. It's just his touch got away from him. And to try and retain possession, he comes off the ground with both feet, starts showing. One more look goes in right there. I mean, he doesn't catch much of Blake, but the two foots up, the studs are showing. This is our best look at it right here. Studs up on the shin, two footed. That's what the referee sees, and Wahab Akwe is off. Colorado Springs, who we've spoken about, probably have, have had the upper hand for most of this game, now find themselves a man down. We spoke about the difficulty of winning games when you go down to 10 men. We, are, we said the way the game started, will we finish the game with 22 players? The answer to that Quick is no. Quick from the free kick, and saved by Herrera. And Jack Blake would most certainly want the opportunity back. Herrera gets a little kick from Stanley there. Seems to be in quite some discomfort. Injury stop is brought to you by Common Spirit Health. So Colorado Springs down to 10 men, still one to one. And while we have a moment here, Chris, circling back to that conversation, you mentioned about the home field advantage. We were starting to dive into that before Wahab yeah. Akwe set this on a different path. But Sean McCauley mentioned it in our chat this week. He thinks it just boils down to the simple fact that there's no easy game in this league anymore. And uh, with respect to the MLS two sides that have left. When they were here, they were frankly doormats at times. You, you look at the likes of New York Red Bulls two and even Loudon when they were still affiliated with DC United, different story now. Vegas, same thing when they were affiliated with LAFC, different story now. But you could look up and down the calendar and here was three points. There was at least a point on the yeah. road. Here's another three points. Not the case anymore. It's a grind. All 24 teams are talented and deep and the specific point that Sean McCauley hit on was it, not only is it the starting 11s it's that a lot of these teams now are maybe 15 16 deep where you're getting deeper and deeper into the lineups losing guys due to injury but the level doesn't drop off that's where this league is at now and that's why to your point sometimes the home field, the home field advantage isn't there anymore and you're getting these teams going on the road coming away with points where in years past it would have been a different story it's a testament to the grind that this league is and has become and it's Great to see as it continues to evolve and grow here in USL Championship. But now with a man advantage, can Indy make it count? Can they send Colorado Springs to a sixth consecutive loss to begin the year? Douglas Martinez gets around the corner. And kept it in, good hustle from Martinez, serves it up. Headed free by Lacroix. One thing to, to, to take into consideration, Joel, is the, the altitude in Colorado is, is different to different parts of the US. So Colorado is around 6,000 feet above sea level, which makes the oxygen a little bit thinner up there. Like it's, it's a lot harder. It takes you a little bit of time to adjust. You get out of breath quicker. I remember a game we played in Azteca, Estadio Azteca, Mexico, and we went to Bogota, Colombia to prepare because of the altitude. And just walking up the steps at the hotel, we were absolutely gassed and out of breath by the time we... So there's a little adjustment that's made when you're, you're playing or training in higher environments of altitude. And I, am, I envision this is something that Colorado Switchbacks try to take advantage of, that when teams fly in, Indiana is just 700 feet above sea level. So to go to 6,000 is a little bit different. And that's the kind of home advantage that players expect to use to their advantage. It's very challenging for a team to come in and sustain, sustain the intensity and play their maximum potential when the circumstances change. But Indy 11... Uh, have competed well tonight given those circumstances. And I would say 
Colorado Switchbacks have had the upper hand, but they've failed to convert their chances, which has been maybe a reoccurring song so far this season. And again, now 25 minutes to go in the game, a game that should, they should have put to bed 3-0. They're down to 10 men. Level pegging with a, when maybe they, they should be in a comfortable driving seat right now. 20 minutes into this second half. Indy again up a man, red card against Wahab Akwe. Losing a center back in that equation, Colorado Springs in the 58th minute. And losing possession here. Valence Pierre took his eye off of it. We'll get Pierre out there for the extra defender now. He slots in at center back next to Matt Mahoney. Matt Real still on this left side, Duplaqua still on the right side. And with Indy 11 now having that numerical advantage, they can afford to make that extra pass because they're going to have they're going to have an overload. They're going to have the extra player. So they need to be a little bit more patient in their possession to be able to take advantage of that. Right now, you, you wouldn't necessarily be able to see the Colorado switchbacks are down a player. But if Indy 11 are able to, to move the ball well and take advantage of the numerical advantage they have, it's only a matter of time before they create chances that's going to give them the opportunity to go ahead. Blake out wide. Stanley out for a corner. Down in the Pepsi corner. You can clearly see now Colorado Switch just dropping all remaining 10 outfield players. Keeper and nine outfield players back behind the ball when they lose possession. Even Darmus now are taking very, very deeper positions because they no longer have the advantage of, of allowing him to stay higher. He has to drop in and take care of the defensive midfielders and the midfielders now have to drop to take care of the 10s. They're going to be more uh, building on, on counter-attack in these remaining 25 minutes, more so than the possession-based chances they created earlier on in the game. Stanley back out to Blake, and he could not keep it in. So two subs made by Colorado Springs. How will Indy counter? Now up a man by taking off Josh O'Brien. And now it's, it's interesting, the mindset, Joe. We spoke Colorado Switchbacks, 0-5-0. So they've lost five games so far this season. They're now down to 10 men with 24 minutes remaining. A point is not a bad result at all. So they have to weigh up now. Do we, do we be expansive and still try to go to the three, three points? Or do we accept we're a man down? We haven't won a game this season. If we, if we get a point, all is not lost. They, That's they actually haven't drawn a game a either this season. <laughs> it, it, they, that would be one point for them. It'd be a step forward more so than a step back. If they go on 10 men and end up losing this game, I think it, it compounds some of the concerns and the, and the situations that they're already facing this season. I think a, a, a tie would actually be a positive result for them in this situation. On the flip side for Indy, you have to go and get three now. You're up a man for a half hour. You only have one win yourself. They bring on Ben Olfemu, replacing Josh O'Brien like for like at right back. They bring on Elliot Collier for Ikoba. There is Collier. Now Guanzati. That sub not necessarily like for like. Collier more of a big target man up top. So either playing with two strikers now or dropping Augie Williams into a bit different of a position. Williams hasn't necessarily got good service this game. He's got the one ball from Stanley that he's converted, but besides that, he, he's kind of been starved of being given good service. Blake has found himself in good positions. He had one good charge at the edge of the box. Gwenzati hasn't really threatened goal tonight. We know that he's a, obviously a huge goal threat also, but never really given their striker anything really, uh, any opportunities really to finish on a consistent basis today. Thomas. Up to Malik Foster. And just because they're down a man, the men they have up top are quite dangerous. Hanya trying to force his way through. Guys like Foster and Damas have that breakaway speed, have that individual ability to still hurt you from any sort of position. 
any sort of match situation. Zach Zandi now. Foster, last touch too heavy. Speedy Williams tracking back, commits the foul. Foster can be when, can be devastated. When he picks up the ball and starts driving you at speed, he, he's really tricky. He can go right foot, he can left foot, he can play on both flanks. And Williams picked up a yellow card for that foul. So we have one red and seven yellows. Uh, let's count them up. <laughs> We've got the red card to Akwe. On the field, we have five yellows. Callum Chapman Page, Cam Lindley, Douglas Martinez, Yosuke Hanya, and Speedy Williams. We did have Juan Tejada and Aiden Rocha sub off as the other two yellows. So yes, seven, but only five remaining on the field. And it's interesting, after Akwe got that red card, maybe it was a little conservative. It's like, hey, we got one, we can't afford to get two and three, so maybe the yellow cards that the players were on, both Rocha and Tejada were both on yellow cards, came into play. James Chapman having to make substitutions to try and manage the, the game the best he can. Malik Foster also picked up a yellow for kicking the ball away and delaying the restart. So now it's eight yellows. <laughs> and six out there on the field at once. Blake opens up. Jack Blake goes down. Free kick in a very promising position here for Indy 11. It's Delens Pierre, the substitute, who fouls Blake. He doesn't have to go down here, Blake. But he's so smart. He feels the contact from the defender. He knows it's a dangerous area and he just lets the momentum take him down and, and wins a free kick for his team in a dangerous area. Jack Blake standing over it with Aiden Stanley. Very capable left foot of Stanley, very capable right foot of Blake in a very promising position. Four man wall. There's a whistle. It is Blake into that wall. Not much ado about nothing in the end. Chapman Page. Chest it away. Just a quick correction on that last play. It was only Foster who picked up a yellow for kicking the ball away, not Speedy Williams. So Chris, they were kind enough to take one yellow off the board in this day full of yellow cards. Now whipped in toward Augie Williams on the doorstep. It's out of play, not a difficult, rather not an easy bounce to deal with. High degree of difficulty there for Augie Williams. Again, Stanley out there with that whipped in delivery. Williams, if he opens up this and uses his side foot, gets a cleaner connection on the ball and a bigger surface, I think he tests the goalkeeper at, at the minimum in that situation, but just unable to get a clean connection on the ball. Thomas, Chapman Page wins the ball. That was a risky challenge from Chapman Page. 
coming in, hooking from behind like that. He is one of the ones on a yellow. The last thing you want to do if you're Indy is bring it to 10v10 and squander your man advantage. Definitely playing on the edge there, reckless pass from Collier there in the center of the park. Times it well though, Chapman Page. Had to. Lindley. Here's Damas. Ronaldo Damas picking up ahead of steam. Foster calling for it, sneaks in behind. Flag comes up, negating this attack from Malik Foster. Very close call. But there is what those two are capable of doing. Even down a man, they're going really 2v4 there as far as the numbers game. And it almost works out. Yeah, Foster with a diagonal run inside. Just goes a yard too early. Takes that touch across this play there. He's through on goal, but see that danger of the threats of runs in behind there from Foster. He's been a, a live wire for Colorado Springs. Understanding we don't have the same vantage point as the assistant referee, <laughs> it looked good to me. Foster was right there. Our vantage point different, of course, than the assistant referees. Oh, if, you're Colorado, it gets. if you're Colorado Springs, though, and you're looking for the, the edge to level things up, you got to get Foster the ball. You've got to get Damas the ball. You've got to tell them run at Chapman Page. Three or four times, he's going to time that tackle wrong one time, and that's going to be him heading for an early shower also. So to try and get things level pegging, they got to look at where they can. Ofemu back toward Williams. Martinez. And it comes out of play. Colorado Springs have to look at where they could potentially gain that advantage back and with three of the Indy 11 players sitting on a yellow card. If they use their attacking players to drive at them, create goals and opportunities and threaten them in 1v1 situations, it's only a matter of time before one of them missed times to tackle and things become even once again. Martinez giving up for a long throw. It's flicked along nicely and Edda has it. Can't watch the match, turn on Sirius XM FC 157, North America's only 24-7 source for engaging soccer talk, including USL All Access Tuesdays at 7 Eastern. Plus, you can hear live matches from the USL, MLS, Premier League, and more, all on Sirius XM FC 157 and the new Sirius XM app. Blake looking for Stanley. Just under a quarter of an hour remains. Colorado Springs one, Indy one. Ronaldo Damas in the third minute for Colorado Springs. Augie Williams in the 31st minute for Indy 11. Happy to have had you with us for this one this evening. With Chris Nurse, I'm Joe Malfa. Fans have braved the snow and ice and cold. And has certainly played a role in this match. A lot of instances where the ball has skipped away from a player on a seemingly routine pass and got out of play. Players have slipped at times. Certainly playing a factor. Doesn't necessarily lead directly to a goal in any capacity, but has made life difficult throughout. And just trying to see how Colorado Springs have, have adapted since going down a man tactically. It almost looks like they, they've gone into a 4-3-2 formation or 4-4-1 four, four, with, with Foster at times playing a little higher and then, as you can see now, dropping back in line with the midfield four. So many tons of space in between those, those players. They've got to be a little bit more tight and compact for me. Chapman Page. Feeds it out wide for Stanley. So those are the moments where the weather has an impact. A very slick surface. That bounce could have and maybe should have been an easy routine bounce for Stanley to whip it across. Instead, he had to play it all the way back. And now he has a chance at it. Aiden Stanley with some options. It's Jack Blake. Still Blake on his weaker foot. And for me, Stanley, Stanley's the left back for Indy. So if there's anybody's defensive responsibility who's, who's going to get out there, it's... Gobby Foster that goes out there and puts the pressure on Stanley. 
he's getting a lot of time now and now you're seeing where they're getting the advantage the numerical advantage it's in the wide areas with Stanley or O'Brien on the opposite side pressing high now they're taking a, a little more risk defensively knowing that they have that advantage well, that'll be all for Yosuke Hanya is that a productive day here for this Colorado Springs side it's Kenzie Erman who takes his spot Substitution is brought to you by the William J. Hale Sports Medicine and Performance Center. Learn more at halecenter.org. There you see those two banks of four. Damas just being the lone advanced player on his own. Doing a good job here to put him under pressure. Wins an opportunity. Long toss ahead for Elo Damas. Ofemu tracks back, taking advantage of the no offside on a throw in there. Damas just hanging out. Great opportunity there to take advantage from some slack play from Indy 11. Ball ends up going out play. Foster reacts quickly here to get possession of the ball and throw it over the top to get Damas in behind, but just not enough pace to let it across his body. And Ofemu does well to get back, but. Herman's corner. Brought to you by Pikes Peak National Bank. Swinger, not a down. Thomas was waiting for it, never got there. Approaching the last 10 minutes of regulation time here, and Colorado Switchers have done a, a good job of defending well since they've gone down to to 10 men. The onus is very much on Indy 11 to, to push the speed of play, the tempo, create goal scoring opportunities. And they've done a, a good job of making it difficult. Getting all 10 players behind the ball and just being patient. Away from the ball, Augie Williams is down. And it's interesting that the referee stops play when the ball's in because obviously now we, we don't often see the referee stop playing unless it's a head, head injury. But Augie Williams does seem to be in some discomfort. Elsewhere, Monterey Bay scored twice in two minutes from 1-0 down to 2-1 up on the road against Memphis. Again here, right side of your screen. His shoulder was put in by Delens Pierre. Rhode Island still up 2-1. to one at Las Vegas. Finished 1-1 between Tampa Bay and El Paso. It's still 1-1 here. So that means with two games remaining tonight, Orange County hosting Sacramento, Phoenix hosting Pittsburgh. All the matches that produced a victor instead of a draw, only one home team still has won. Louisville, San Antonio, Charleston, Birmingham, New Mexico, and perhaps Rhode Island and Monterey Bay, all road teams winning today. Indy wants to join that group with a goal here late. Seven to play, up a man. They've been level at one since the 31st minute. It's Stanley out wide. A lot of disappointed home fans tonight. Cut back here, it's Gwenzotti. Blocked, Ofemu blocked again. Look at all those white jerseys right now helping out the goalkeeper, Herrera. Not really any lanes to shoot through. Even when they get close there, Indy, it's still difficult for them. Colorado switchers have to be careful allowing Stanley this time and space. It's a great delivery. Just needs to, Gwenzai just needs to be coming on to that first time. It's probably a little bit too advanced it would have been like had he been on the, the move with momentum and just coming on to that brilliant cutback delivery there from Stanley first time. 
would have had a better chance of getting good connection and purchase onto it. But having to take a touch and slow it down allowed Colorado Springs good opportunity to get pressure on the ball and block a shot. And Mines came on for Douglas Martinez on the Indy side. Two subs remaining and one substitution window in the 11. Same scenario for Colorado Springs. Two subs remaining, one window remaining. eFootball 2024 is here. Live your dream, rep your team, and play as your favorite USL Championship club. eFootball free to play. Download now. minutes to play. Indy with some urgency. They're playing up a man. Famo latches on to it. Lindley tries to switch. Intercepted by Herman. Oh, there's no card there. Thought we were going to see another one. Blake slips it through for Guenzotti. Thomas. Does well to keep possession there. Malik Foster has floated to this left side now. Kenzie Herman on the right side. It's a wicked left foot to cut in on. Thomas looking for Herman. He drops it back. A better ball would have seen Speedy Williams in open space. Good play here from Damas. Good idea just to lay it off first time, but Williams just didn't anticipate his coming. Had he been on the front foot first to react to that, great opportunity to put his team ahead. Just a little bit flat-footed there. Wasn't anticipating the ball was going to be laid off first time. And in the 11 on the counter-attack here. Guanzati, Ben Mines, flips it all the way through. Just waiting for a red jersey to enter your screen. and. No one ever did. Game wide open here, but you have to give Colorado Springs play credit. Despite being down a man, they're still very much in the game. How about that move from Malik Foster? A sure yellow for Ben so, Ofemu. For sure. I would go into the referee's pocket and take out for him if he didn't <laughs> do it on this occasion. Foster, great. Talk about his 1v1 ability. Look at this. The fans love to see and He just can't live with him. He just holds on to him, pulls him back Ofemu. And honestly, it's smart defending. If you don't hold on to Foster there, he's off. And creating creating goal scoring opportunities. Now he's taking the yellow card, give his team to get all 11 players back behind the ball. Now they, they, they can defend it well. That versus health yellow card. Been plenty of them today. It's launched by Matt Rial. It's been a half an hour down a man for Colorado Springs. They have not wilted yet. And they're still, they're still playing with their same philosophy, keeping possession, trying to create goal-scoring opportunities. You'd expect that maybe being down a man, they're just going to try and boot and kick, kick everything and make the game very ugly, but still try, staying true to their values and actually having success with it. Down a man, and they're still finding a way to connect passes and, and build up against Indy 11. Lacroix gave it away. Ben Mines slips it through. Williams dummies it through. It's Blake. Some contact there. Williams comes through with it. Lindley back for Blake, holding it up. Proved to be good defending from Colorado. Switchbacks in the end. A couple shaky moments. Now it's Thomas with Foster.
Royce takes it toward the corner and retains possession for the switchbacks. Game is wide open now, end to end for both teams. Good tackle there from the captain, I believe it was. Mahoney. They almost jinxed it. We were talking about a little while ago that the weather hasn't directly led to a goal. Speedy Williams slipped there, and that's what almost allowed Augie Williams to come through free in the box. Fortunately for Williams and Colorado Springs, or rather for Speedy Williams and Colorado Springs, Augie Williams is also a bit flat-footed on the slick surface. Williams. Mahoney, it's blocked. Zandy trying to keep it alive. 90th minute. I think there's a wasted opportunity there from Williams to get the ball into the box. You have Darmus in there waiting for delivery, cuts it back, and they don't end up getting the ball into any dangerous areas to get the goal. At this phase of the game and you're down a man, you probably have to take the risk and put the ball into threatening areas. Four minutes of stoppage time brought to you by TikTok Shop. Stanley is going to run out of room. This would be the first point of the season for Colorado Springs. Five losses in their first five games. To be able to, to get that point, finishing the game with 10 minutes, is, is going to be a psychological boost for the players because it's hard work. They haven't got a point so far this season. They could potentially get a point at home with 10 minutes. It's a, it's a step forward for them. And, you know, you have to take your small wins. And for Colorado Switchbacks this season, this will be a little win that they can continue to build on as they go forward. James Chambers spoke about, you know, he's not too concerned. The players are doing the right thing. They have the right mentality. They have the good quality. Their approach to training and games is good. Just need to be more clinical. And I, and I think I'd agree if they'd have been more clinical in the final third tonight, they run away, run away with this game despite losing a man. But they haven't been as clinical as they could have been. And so they find themselves uh, tied going into the last two minutes of the game. Stanley. That's out for a corner. Curled in, it falls for Augie Williams. Another corner coming from this side now. Brilliant defending there from Matt Real, the player on loan from Philadelphia Union, closing down space quickly and blocking the shot that was inevitably destined for, for target at least. Stanley, good delivery. Foster again. Oh, up over the bench as well. Relentless work ethic. Doesn't give up on anything. Those deliveries, those from Stanley, is a striker's dream. The way he whips in that ball with pace. A little bit of hockey there. That looks like hockey <laughs> up against the boards. Well, he's good to go. Fans' favorite. It has to be the, the energy, the intensity, the determination. Embodies the values of, of the organization and the fans. Final minute of added time. Is there a winner yet in this one? Still up a man, Indy, pressing Collier. Herman almost lost it. Dangerous pass back to the middle and just cleared. Valence Pierre not taking any chances. Long run from Dispay. And he did save it. Nope. <laughs> Late decision from the assistant referee that it was just out.
And a change coming. Ronaldo Damas being pulled off in favor of Alex Anderson. And with that, Ronaldo Damas is your man of the match brought to you by Groom Transportation, providing stress-free airport shuttle service between Denver and Colorado Springs. Damas with his first goal of the season back in minute number three. Man at the pivotal moment in this game, getting his head onto the ball, guiding it into the corner, giving his team the go-ahead goal in the opening three minutes. Beyond four minutes now, some stoppages within stoppage time. Does the referee tack anything else on? He's pay. With it again. Have to be urgent about it. This could very well be the last attack of the game for Indy. Stanley. Dees pay. Cam Lindley. Chipping it through. Too long. Out of play. Good defender from Colorado switch press. The ball goes out to Stanley. We've seen him put dangerous balls into the box time and time again. They get out there, do well to shut it off at its source, make him pay backwards. And evidently the ball's now played over the top and out of play. Herrera just needs to be smart here. Kill the tempo of the game. Don't allow Indiana, Indy 11 to create any more chances for them to get. And they take away the point. It's one step forward. Famo, Buggy Williams gets there as the snow begins to fall again. A cheeky flick on from Williams. And there is the final whistle. They played down a man for over a half an hour. But Colorado Springs switchbacks pick up their first point of 2024. It was Ronaldo Damas in the third minute. Augie Williams in the 31st minute. And these teams who have stumbled out of the gates walk away with a point each. And we take a look now at the critical moment of the match brought to you by Common Spirit Health. It is that opening goal for Colorado Springs. Ronaldo Damas, his first of the year. We'll see if that's the one that allowed the floodgates to open. Great start to the game here from Colorado Springs. Driving into the box, deflections, keeper makes a mishap. Damas backtracking, gets his head on the ball, snaps it into the corner, gives his team the go-ahead goal, 1-0. They were hoping that would hold up as the goal that would give them their first win of the season, but it proves to be the goal that gives them their first point and their first drop of the season after Augie Williams equalized 28 minutes later. Switchbacks greeting the supporters. We come back in just a moment to wrap things up from Widener Field. 1-1, it finishes between Colorado Springs and Indy. The moment you call McDevitt, an action plan is put into place right away to get you the help you need. Each case and each client is different, with different needs and solutions. Your attorney and team immediately investigates every aspect of your crash and injuries. We track down all the paperwork and deal directly with the insurance company for you. We keep you in the loop every step of the way, fighting to get you max money for your injuries. And you never pay us a dime until we get money for you. McDevitt. And then my grand slam, uh, I signed the ball for you. Okay. And it says, Papa, I love you. Why did you do that? Because you've taught me everything about baseball. I'm so sweet. Thank you, Jay Chimino. You are the true champion. Thank you, Jay, for your vision of creating a new state park, for letting your spirit shine, and always putting people first. And being a friend to all. This April, we're saying thanks, Jay, and continuing his legacy of giving back. For every car sold, we'll make a donation to five community-focused organizations. Our thank you to an extraordinary man. Your final score brought to you by Common Spirit Health is one to one between Colorado Springs and Indy. A goal each for a point each tonight and a snowy Widener field. Take a look at the highlights from the action brought to you by McDivitt. It was wide open end to end. Everything a neutral could hope for with 24 combined shots and the goal came early.
and is a perfect start here for Colorado Springs. Good penetrating passes, runs in behind, driving at players, but they did need a little bit of luck with a go-ahead goal. Some poor defending here, ball comes across, keeper scuffs it, and Damas does everything right in the situation. Backtrack, good connection on the header, and into the bottom corners, give his team the lead. I will never understand the physics of how he got any power <laughs> on that header, diving away, not much spin or power on the ball itself somehow snaps it in. That's the strongest neck in the Midwest, I would have to imagine. And then 31 minutes in, the equalizer. Good play from Blake here, putting the ball in behind, but Stanley has a wonder of a left foot here. Perfectly delivered ball into the box for the head of Williams. Guides it on target. The pace was on the ball. The equalizing goal. And the chances would come in spades in the second half as well as the snow began to tumble down as well. And Indy, really the better of the two sides in the second half. Yeah, Indy had the, the player advantage and Blake, who was a threat throughout the whole game, constantly a thorn in the side, but this wicked deflection, Herrera did well to get good connection and pushes over the crossbar. Great look for volleyed here from Guenzati. And thereafter, you would have the red card against Wahab Akwe. Some more opportunities for Indy, but it finished one to one. Taking a look now at the full-time stats brought to you by Groom Transportation. Possession, that's in his calling card. They started to do more with it, but again, it came with the man advantage. Yeah, I think once the... Uh, Colorado switchbacks went down to 10 men. Indy did start to dominate the possession, did start to create more chances, but they didn't really make anything happen with the chances and the possession that they had. So I think 1-1 uh, is a, a fair representation of tonight's game. I think a step forward for Colorado Springs, having not won a game all season, but one point is better than zero points. Indy home against North Carolina next week, and Colorado Springs on the road against the Oakland Roots. Well, two teams who are maybe the most talented or among the most talented on paper in all of USL Championship. Starting the season slow, they played a fun one today that finishes one-to-one. -one for the crew that makes this possible, and my broadcast partner, Chris Nurse, I'm Joe Malpa saying so long for now. Switchbacks and Indy 11 take a point each on a goal each. Plenty of action to catch around the league. You can go over now to Orange County and Sacramento here in the USL Championship. Good night, everybody. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.